All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Michael Carilli. I am a uh, developer technology engineer uh, at NVIDIA on the PyTorch Frameworks team. And today I'm going to be talking to you about training with mixed precision using a mixture of torch.float, or FP32, and torch.half, or FP16, to take full advantage of the hardware capabilities that NVIDIA's latest GPUs provide. So what are the benefits of this? Using mixed precision uh, and our latest Tensor Core-enabled architectures, your networks can achieve substantial improved speedups. Uh, they can be more memory efficient while remaining just as accurate without needing to retune your hyperparameters. Alternatively, the speedups and memory savings can enable you to experiment with larger networks or larger batch sizes. So the first question you may be wondering is, why, why not just stick with the default uh, torch.float or FP32? The answer is, first of all, FP16 or torch.half enables, um, it takes up half the memory storage. Um, it can see a 2x speed up for bandwidth bound operations, but that's not the only benefit. On NVIDIA's Tensor Core GPUs, uh, there's dedicated hardware support for matrix multiplies and convolutions with FP16 input. And these hardware cores, these, these Tensor Cores, um, give 8x improved computational throughput for such operations, for matrix multiplies and convolutions. So if your network happens to use a lot of matrix multiplies and convolutions, you can see significantly greater than a 2x end-to-end speedup. And I'll provide some concrete examples of that shortly. So now you may be asking the opposite question. Why not just use torch.half for everything? The answer is that some operations, like accumulations and optimizer updates, also benefit from the wider dynamic range and increased precision of FP32. The idea behind mixed precision is that by assigning each operation its optimal precision, you obtain the speed of FP16, the precision of FP32, and take full advantage of the hardware, the full hardware capabilities of NVIDIA GPUs and achieve high speed as well as stability. So how well does this work in practice? Here's an example that shows we've achieved substantial speed ups on a diversity of highly relevant real world networks. And the links below show that you can, uh, you can check out these examples yourself. Um, your speedups may vary depending on whether your network is more compute bound, more bandwidth bound, or constrained by something else like data loading. For example, BERT, you can see, uh, achieved a pretty hefty speedup because it uses a lot of very expensive uh, matrix matrix multiplies for which the tensor cores are highly beneficial. You may also be wondering, does training with mixed precision affect my accuracy? And in practice, we found that all the networks that we've trained with FP16, or rather with mixed precision, have converged to comparable accuracy as pure FP32 training with no hyperparameter changes. So that's encouraging. Um, so how can you realize these benefits for your own network? We've developed this tool called Automatic Mixed Precision, or AMP whereby you can insert a few lines of Python into your script, and it will do this entire recipe for you automatically. Here's how that looks in a simple example. These three lines ensure that every operation runs in its appropriate precision. This tool is available to try today through the NVIDIA repository of Apex utilities. Um, I've updated the landing pages to contain a link to this talk, so you can also use those to track down uh, the deep learning examples of Burton, Mascar, CNN, et cetera, that showcase uh, mixed precision best practices as well as the resulting speedups. So as PyTorch developers, uh, naturally the best way to reach you guys is through PyTorch itself. So today I'm happy to announce that we are currently working with the PyTorch core team to enable native support for mixed precision in PyTorch this quarter. Um, I've already got uh, an API request for comment up, as well as the first PR. So uh, feel free to comment. Let us know what you need. Um, we have certainly tried to take into account all the complex use cases we've accounted for along the way to make sure that the implementation will be uh, powerful and flexible but we're also interested to hear um, what you guys have to say.
Ooh.